Jimmy Garoppolo. And I wasn't sure. I did not watch it live, Jimmy Garoppolo's press conference. Um, I went back and watched it on YouTube. And uh, I saw some tweets about Jimmy Cust. And my first reaction when I saw that was, uh, is he trying too hard to show that he's not affected by this thing that everybody thinks he should be affected by? That assumption was incorrect. I watched it. I know you also reached the same conclusion. I watched it and thought, you know, I think he's pretty comfortable with the situation, the football situation. He was a little fidgety. I think answering questions, the, the, the media part of it, not his favorite thing, but he does it very well. I mean, he's fine. It's not a complaint by me, but I actually think he's pretty comfortable with the football aspect of things after watching him speak on Wednesday. Yeah, I mean, uh, anytime you become a new Travis Matthews male model, and I think we've been talking for years, Rom, not the ideal body type, Jimmy, ideal body type for, for that cut. Uh, perfect fit for them. I, I, I think sometimes we overthink it, and I know I do. We all do, just in these situations with just players – it's so different in sports than most jobs, but it happens in jobs when people come in and you can tell right away, like that guy's going to pass you fast or you are out of, you know, uh, you know, the way a boss thinks about you. It's happened to me before in football and definitely in radio where you're like, this isn't probably good. Like you, humans are not dumb. You, you can naturally, we're all survivors feel out of situation in football and pro sports. It's pretty fucking obvious when you trade three first round picks, you know, for a player, and then he sits next to you every day. This guy, once upon a time, little different situation, though, but still, like, pretty highest drafted quarterback at the time until Mac Jones, for Bill Belichick ever. He sat next to Tom Brady every day for three and a half years. He was coached in the most contentious might be the wrong word, but just intense, I would say, building over that period of time, definitely of, like, the last couple decades in the National Football League. Right. With Belichick and Tom like that is an intense environment. That's where he learned. That's where he got like his base of football knowledge in the league. Can I give you a can I interject there? Because I think you're making a great point. And I, I told you this the other day when I was driving back from the airport. But I talked to somebody at Pac-12 Media Day, like there's a bunch of coaches, just a lot of people who know people. And I was like, what's the deal? They love I was talking to somebody who loves Ayuk. And I was like, what do you think of Nikhil? And they said, you know. The second Nikhil went to New England, they thought that was not a great fit given just everything you just described, how much was going to be put on him, how quickly it was going to be put on him. And it clearly, it I don't know, you know, he got hurt. He had some injuries that slowed him down too, but maybe all of that stuff that comes with being in New England slowed him down a little bit as well. So that's a very real thing that players deal with. Well, it's a double whammy, right? Intellectually, it's known offensively as the hardest place in the league offensively what you have it, it's wiped out a bunch of players chad johnson would just couldn't learn the playbook uh and then physically if you and i talked before about the julian edelman what he told chris long about like we used to scrimmage like people thought like bye week patriots just going to cancun like no they were a full team scrimmage to the ground in pads from like 12, 13, 14, 15, because guess what? They were the number one or two seed for like eight straight years. They had a full-on game outside in the cold. That's what that that's where Jimmy learned football. Now, things got a little weird, right, over the last couple of years with his injury. I just he just became a very easily one of the more polarizing players in the league. Right? And anytime you're a star, you're I guess if you play bad, you get criticized harsh. I actually think once you get paid and you're in like that the tier that he's in, kind of middle of the road, those are the guys that take the most arrows, truly, right? Kirk Cousins, Derek Carr, because the majority of people are saying he might not be that good. Right. Like I, once you become a – like Jamal Adams gets lit up in pass coverage. It's like, well, he just struggles in pass – but it's not like everyone knows he's a good player or Jalen Ramsey screws up. When you're that in that 10 to 20 range of quarterbacks, I think they take the most arrows. Because when they're good, it's like, oh, well, fuck, every you know squirrel finds a nut. But when he's shitty, or just when he struggles a little bit, we've seen it. You and I have been talking about Carr for eight years. He's a great example. I think Kirk Cousins. So it's just, I think he's kind of numb to it all. So I, to me, he's if he plays bad or he plays good, like it's going to be based on his physical ability, the team, the coaching. Mentally, he just I, that's the least of my worries with him. Like especially handling the situation. Uh I couldn't agree more. And I think sometimes we're reminded of what he was in 
the middle of in New England. But I also think we got to think about what he's in the middle of now, I, right? Which is also a very demanding environment for a quarterback. And the 49ers got an opportunity to work with him and then decided to pay him. They didn't pay him before he showed up. So Kyle Shanahan gave stamp of approval on Jimmy Garoppolo. Does that mean he's the my, his ideal quarterback? No, obviously not. They just drafted a quarterback third. But I, I just think it's an it's evidence of, you know, he's handling these situations in the way that, you know, sometimes I like to say this stuff is the price of admission. Like if you're going to have a chance to be a really good quarterback, these are the types of things you deal with. But not everybody handled not everybody can handle the price of admission. And I think we spend so much time talking about Trey Lance and watching Trey Lance highlights and what's it going to be when Trey Lance connects with Ayuk. And yeah, but what if Trey Lance doesn't get into a competition with Jimmy Garoppolo and Jimmy Garoppolo is the 49ers starter week one, which is the most likely outcome, right? Yes. What then? Are they good enough to compete for a Super Bowl then? Well, unless Jimmy gets hurt, he's starting week one, right? Yeah, so like – the, how this guy handles this situation is critically important to how many games the 49ers win this year. For sure. And uh, I thought, you know, Mayoko asked him a question about the Niners, uh, the way Mayoko prefaced it, I think it was Matt, said, you know, they, they were interested in Deshaun, they were interested in Stafford. Is there anything you need to hear from the coaches? What do you want to hear from the coaches in terms of their support of you? And his answer, he didn't, his answer was perfect because, A, it's like it's a catch-22. You don't want a player to say, like, oh, what I really want to hear from the coaches is they love me. His answer was just like, I, I don't really think about that. I And then he spun it into actually a compliment for the 49ers coaching staff. He's like, I've been here. These coaches put you in a position to succeed. I've been in New England. They put you in a position to succeed. I'm pretty lucky because most places around the league are not like that. This is uncommon. And I think that is the healthiest way for him to recognize. I think you and I talked about this when they traded, where they traded up and then got Trey Lance, which is it's still there still is an opportunity here for Jimmy Garoppolo. He might not be the 49ers quarterback in 2022 or 2023, but he still is the quarterback for Kyle Shanahan today on a pretty talented team, which is a pretty good position to be in. And there's a lot worse situations to be in in the NFL. And so if he wants a shot to get another contract and be somebody else's quarterback, how many other places would you pick than right here if you're him? No, he's a, he's in a pretty good spot. He knows that. They know it. I mean, it's it's about as smooth of a transition opportunity as you're going to get. Now, it can go the other way. If he's shitty, like there's no guarantee that he's going to play well, right? He could throw picks. He could yeah. struggle. But his odds are better here than in name yeah. most other places. For sure. I also think he, at the end of the day at that position – you're given just opportunity. I mean, Ryan Tannehill is a good example. Like he's he's in a pretty good spot. Josh Johnson just got signed by the Jets yesterday or the day, before. or maybe they maybe they brought him in just in case they were going to have to sack Wilson hold out. Yeah, but but I mean, Jimmy's in a completely different world than guys like that. Well, exactly. And I'm saying right? he's how many chances is he, he's just been around. Yeah, but I, to me, J- Jimmy, good or ba- d- bad, he's going to have a Ryan Tannehill type. Like someone just bring him in as a backup and then just who knows. If he's good, someone will trade for him as a starter. So it's like he had, he can, his bet's hedged where it can go shitty and he's still going to get a job. If it goes well, he can go start somewhere. Yeah. Because that's, let's face it, this is his last. Like he will not, This is there's no Aaron Rodgers. Like, you know, we'll just see how long this can go. Like it's over after this year. 